This is the Blockade Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. Hi, everyone. How are you going? Hey, folks. How's my audio level? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Hopefully, it's uh, a bit better after we've been messing with it. <laughs> I um, had to knock Jared down by, like, 10 decibels. <laughs> yeah, knock me down a couple of notches. It right. happens. Something uh, like that. I uh, Apologies <laughs> for that. Um to my ear, when I listen back, it sounds just fine, but apparently not. So, <laughs> yeah, it was just a, it's not that you weren't audible, it's just I was really loud when it was coming through. So it was like a, a mismatch of audio, but yeah. hopefully this one's better. Hopefully. Certainly our, pre, our pre recording tests suggest <laughs> that it is right, but who knows? <laughs> who Maybe knows my computer just likes balancing them out just nice, and then when it kicks it out, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't know. I don't know. <laughs> weird how you been jared it's been a little bit uh it, it had felt like a little bit yeah we've missed a a week here and there haven't we because uh yeah reasons <laughs> reasons here and there you know that's okay mm. um uh, y'all might have noticed i've been kicking out content and some of it y'all have been watching a lot of so mm. um, how are your all your little side projects been going as far as videos go uh, yeah the views go? yeah um you seem to be digging it you know, they're getting a decent amount of views. Um, I think the curiosity factor uh, certainly plays. And uh, it's been a learning curve, to be sure. <laughs> um, mm. It still feels weird when I do recordings to just start talking in a space to an invisible audience because I know that the people in my house all of a sudden are like, "What is? who is he talking to? <laughs> <laughs> do you actually have a camera a doing some work for you is it all just tripod no it's all just tripod <laughs> so right. I was gonna it's, say, like... it's just spur of the moment all of a sudden i set it up and i just start talking and you know and when i'm out in my garage and i got the garage door open and people are just wandering by <laughs> just like, Going, what is this guy doing he's talking to himself right in front of a pinball machine um yeah. yeah, so that's been kind of uh, strange and um, <laughs> something strange. for me to, like, like I have no problem doing these podcasts talking to you because it's as if mm. I'm just on a telephone call, right? It's just like we're having a chat. That's it's really what it's about. Right. We're, so like it, we're on a Zoom call. Yeah, really. yeah. But yeah. when you're delivering content, there's a different way that you speak and um, the way your cadence comes out, it just, it's odd. That's all. Um, I can, yes, it's, yes, it's almost like, yeah, it would be different. I've, I've, I've sort of done it before when I've just been recording my own things downstairs. Yeah. For just like, you know, with handheld phone, doing the walkthrough of the machine or like doing some nerdy thing that I'm doing down there. Yeah. And it, it feels weird. I, I end up just talking, really, and it's probably a little bit sort of ad hoc. But <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, feels feels fine. It Look, just, it, I, I feel don't know, this, it sort of feels natural. I feel the exact same way about. I I don't have uh, you know Nest products around the house or anything, um, but I do have mm. a remote that sometimes, in the case of searching, that you push and then you go, you say the name of the show or whatever that you want, and I feel so mm. weird whenever i have to do that to too. the remote control yeah because yeah. the whole house is silent and all of a sudden you'll be like house of the dragon my little pony <laughs> and it's just like and then you're right back to being silent so <laughs> they're probably listening to you going why yeah, sure house of the dragon <laughs> okay yeah fine you yeah. know uh, i i feel uh, like yes. it's doing karaoke if you had headphones on <laughs> nobody else can right. hear anything um oh so. it's a silent disco sort of thing as well like yeah. you know when you're dancing and there's no music right and it's like uh, right it's weird <laughs> yeah um Anyhow. but uh the 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 one video that i made that uh everybody apparently really likes was the unboxing of the at games legends 4k pinball um mm. that thing that thing took off. <laughs> right. It, it, it did. That's uh, unboxing, man. It did really well. Yeah. And I'm like, I find unboxing videos to be ridiculous. 
And so I, 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 I totally I, agree, man. <laughs> like, I can't watch them. I can't watch unboxing videos at all. And, I can't do it. And the thing of it is, is that half the time I'm just like, get on with it. What are you doing? It's like, cut the tape, man. Like, just cut it and open the thing up. I don't want to, I don't really care if the box feels like 150 GSM or like right. whatever. <laughs> right. The, the, the level care. of detail that gets put in becomes absurd so when i first started doing the video i almost wanted to mock it and so <laughs> do a parody video and, yeah. and 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 so i like i did the really close-up of the razor blade as i was going across I saw the tape. It. I was with, oh, what are you doing um, but it's great i i quickly um, dropped that because i'm like that's not the kind of video otherwise rad. i would have spent five minutes on the kind of foam that they packed it with mm. um, meanwhile I'm, I'm just like it going, like i just want to build the damn thing you know, yeah, I just want to get the thing out of the box and build it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, what started out as kind of parody-ish just kind of went into more, look, if I was doing this, this is what I would want to see. Um, mm. And apparently, you know, y'all have right. enjoyed viewing it. So, um, yeah, we're going to talk. I a, must admit, yeah. I, hand on heart, I, I had to stop halfway through. <laughs> I couldn't watch it all. <laughs> I couldn't watch it all. I, I, I just believe you. I believe you that you unbox the thing and it, it's good. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't watch um, it all the way through, man. If you did watch the unpacking video, then you got m a fair amount of the impressions that I was surprised by. Mainly the size of the thing, um, mm. the look of it looks like a pinball machine. Um, it's not that narrow crap that was the previous version. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the previous Act Games version. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So that's an improvement. The height is taller than the previous Act Games uh, version. I did compare it to my pin sim cab, which measures exactly the same height as my pinball machines out in the garage. Um, and this one is shorter by, I think it was like an inch. Um, and it's narrower by three inches but when you don't have it sitting next to anything and it's just by itself you don't notice um right okay yeah that's good the powder coating i i again first impression when i saw the pictures i was like oh why didn't they just go with steel why didn't they do polished steel chrome chrome whatever yeah you know um mm. but then i realized that isn't most of stern stuff powder coated now sure is yeah <laughs> and again once i put hands on it it just went yeah this the cold was there you know what i mean the the you want the cold steel you want the feel. cold steel feel that's there yeah. um it's just ridged because it's you know it's that powder coat texture on there um so you your know hand i think they slide. did it you What's know that? why i think stern you know why i think stern went down that path hmm. this is a theory it's that like over the years and i know this because of all the ones i've got chrome gets knocked around it looks a bit rubbish really yeah over the years yeah um but powder coat's tough yeah. and and even on some of the really old absolutely hammered early sterns like you know simpsons pinball party and, and of that era the powder coats on those they're still you know, they might be thin in spots but they're still holding up and re-powder coating something it's easy. Like, yeah. you know, re-chroming something, not so easy. Although, <laughs> so, I mean, like, all the Gottliebs and stuff, it's not chrome. It's just polished steel. Uh, all the Gottlieb, well, all my Gottliebs seem to be chromed. Like, the legs are chrome, the lockdown bar are chromed, and the side rails are chromed. No, mine's just polished, it's just polished steel. Because no, chrome, chrome, chrome would flake. Chrome would flake. Oh, uh, it's, and I've taken I've taken polishing wheels to <laughs> to this stuff before. Um, oh, so you reckon it's actually not chrome at all? It's, it's not chrome steel. at all. No, it's steel. Because, mm. and I say that because I have seen videos of people sending out their legs to get them chromed, and right. chrome is incredibly expensive to get done. So mm. even if you buy brand new legs off of you know from Marco or from pinball resource your legs are gonna cost you 20 to 30 bucks per leg if they were actually chromed i think you're talking about 60 bucks per leg they got to be then polished steel yeah. and that's why they rust as well yes and that's why they corrode yeah. and yeah 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 
So because you think, yeah, that actually does make sense. Because if you think about it, you're you're tightening and loosening the leg bolts all the time on pinball machines. Yeah, that will be the first point where the chrome cracks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on there. So I think the maybe it's anodized metal because if you think about it, on so like let's say Indiana Jones, it has that sort of like colored legs on it, like yeah. the sort of yellowy sort of legs. Yeah. So maybe that's anodized. That's probably anodized. Chrome. Anodized, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but not chromed, probably, because no. it would be it would be shiny if it was chromed, right? Yeah. Um, the actual feel of the cabinet, it it it's got a heft to it. Um, right. There's there's a decent. Doesn't feel like a toy. No, it doesn't feel like a toy. It, there's weight behind it for sure. You don't feel like you're going to lean on it and break it. Um, mm. The the decal feels nice and attached. It doesn't feel like some cheap paper or anything. It's definitely a vinyl that's there. Um, nice. When I opened up the back of the cabinet, it wasn't just all of a sudden raw MDF. It's all black. Like it's got a um, a wrap on it of sorts. Oh, right. Like so it's like covered in BF. Yeah. 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 Like very similar to like, you know, if you ever bought a modern IKEA bit of furniture, they've, they've yes. done that now with all theirs. Like yeah. it's got like a vinyl sort of coating around it. Yeah. 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 Um, skin. It's a skin. Uh, mm. Attaching the wires, it was all very obvious. Um, there was label and label. And the labels were all different colors to match. You know, so you just matched up the two colored labels and went, plug, 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 good to go. The only thing Easy. that proved an issue to me was the topper. Um, I plugged that thing in. It didn't turn on. I could have sworn that I tried doing the plug the opposite direction because it's the only plug where the plug is directly in the center of the housing. All the other ones, oh. the plugs are staggered, so there's only one way to plug it in. Um right. I wound up filing a trouble ticket and was about to get it taken care of. And I saw a video of somebody having the same issue. And they were like, you got to turn the plug. And I was like, I know I did this. I know I did this. I went, took it apart. Same. Bing, it lit up. I went, unbelievable. Uh. <laughs> that being said, customer service, I sent the notification on a Sunday evening by Monday morning. They had already emailed me, asked me uh, to send pictures. I sent pictures and uh, all my information, and they were going to look into what was going to be needed to be done. And by the next day, I'd already figured it out. Boom. Sent a message back to them. Got it covered. They're like, great. So customer That's service. really was, good. Yeah, the customer service was on top of it. Um, so that That's was excellent. That's that was really, excellent. really good to hear. Yeah. Um, the, <laughs> the very first firmware updates <laughs> that took a good solid hour, hour and a half. It would, oh, wow. it would be downloading, downloading, installing, downloading, and then go fail. <laughs> mm. And then you got to start again. And it was almost like it was just bit by bit doing each one. It finally went all the way through, and then it went, there's a new firmware update. I had to do another firmware update after that. Um, so mm. that was no joke. That took a long time to get it up and running and going. Um, that doesn't sound great. But, I mean, that's just, again, that's that can be the nature of a firmware update. But now I understand, because people with the Legends HD were complaining now and then about when a firmware update would happen and it would completely bork everything. It would brick everything, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can see how frustrating that would be because, yeah, all of a sudden you would just have something that doesn't work um, and you'd be yeah. waiting and waiting for them to, to adjust it. Um, mm. Fortunately, that hasn't happened as of yet. The UI is very intuitive. Um, there's no, no instruction manual comes with this. It comes mm. with a QR code, and you scan the QR code, and the QR code gives you a brief video of them assembling the machine. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's about the end of it. There's no go to here, and this is what this, but the UI, the way it's laid out, the instructions on it are pretty clear, tell you exactly what everything is going to do. Um, I futzed around and you know tried A B comparison things. You figure it out pretty easily. It's not 
it's not difficult. It's pretty intuitive. So that's nice. Right. Um, and if you don't like the way this UI looks, which basically looks like pinup popper, where it's, you know, balls rolling, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. you can go to the grid if you want. Okay, that's cool. Uh, the D-pad that it comes with, yeah, it's cheap. <laughs> it's yeah. nothing to write home about. Um, I then quickly installed my arcade pad. Um, it's a little punchier on the sound, mm. um, a little more lively, but it is nice just having that joystick and having the buttons. Uh, unfortunately, and I'm having a really, I haven't gone OTG yet, but unfortunately, I guess it's still not mapped. Um, and talking nice to computers. Uh, you have right. to do like a way of fooling the computer into thinking it's an Xbox pad. And I know that that's something oh, that that's Ad Games nice. is working on. Um, oh, to make that experience a bit easier to be yes. able to use it like a native controller. Right now, you cannot download any arcade games onto the machine. So you have oh. the arcade controller. There's no games that you can play on it currently. Um, right. The only things you'd be playing is if you're playing OTG. But those are coming and i have a feeling that once that is there that's when ad games is going to be addressing it i'm sure um oh probably and yeah it'll, and it'll get that working properly uh, it's interesting though because that the board that's in there now is was the updated board in the previous version of the 4k yes. pinball so you would think that they would have addressed those driver issues or that interface issue then um but maybe i don't know it's yeah. a different bit of software they're using so therefore um like they've had to they haven't got that support in there yet obviously yeah um trying to think of all the little uh little ticky tack things that go on there uh oh i was very pleased that it's glass on top um oh, there's nice. a slight bevel that then goes below that then goes to the play field um mm. it looks nice it, it it's i'm I, like i said i was very pleased i thought that it was directly on top <laughs> for some reason like direct like direct screen right direct on screen play yeah field. no but there's yeah. a nice piece of glass there um and uh the actual play field itself you can look at it from any angle it looks great um, oh so the field the the it doesn't feel view is great yeah feel of view is great the back glass monitor yeah if you start going to the side you start you know seeing the colors fade um but look, they've put the money where it needs to where go, your eyeballs right? are going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly the right way of doing it. Yeah. Um, and then the same thing goes for the uh, the little DMD screen. Uh, yeah, it's very directional. Yeah. Which again, there was options of I believe being able to stretch the DMD, but I was very pleased that right out the box, Adam's family plays with the DMD in the proper aspect ratio. Uh, I don't think it would look very good at all stretched. No, but that's what people were doing on uh, Arcade 1-Up's machine when they were importing, and I was just like, that drives me bonkers. That's yuck. <laughs> I'd rather have it thin and correct aspect, yeah. aspect ratio every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will say that the DMD, it's still a little small. Um, yeah. The, it, it's fine when it's using the entire 16 by 9 but for the for the four by one dmd for the letterbox dmd it's it, it's, it's small, it's small. <laughs> there's no, no doubt it, about it as an aside um not cabinet thing but i've actually gone and selected the maximum size dmd in game and pinball effects it's much better like i've gone the biggest one you can mm. possibly do mm -hmm. it, it makes a massive difference mm. um to mind joint okay of the game being able to like not have to squint at it and be able to just really easily glance it's yeah it's worth experimenting but yeah. i agree that on a cabinet um it would be nicer if that screen was just a touch wider and taller yeah but you know it's still a price and yeah. you can still see it and use it and you're right if it's like a full screen video it'd be absolutely fine perfect size yeah the startup you start it up so from flip the switch to playing a game it's about a minute maybe possibly a little bit more barely mm. Um, so it's pretty quick startup. 
and it's better than most sterns <laughs> at the moment <laughs> like with this spike 2 system like you're waiting a lot longer for a game to come up to power maybe yeah. about 30 to 1 minute so as well so yeah you know it's perfectly fine uh in terms of things that uh you know, quality of life that would be interesting for them to change in software terms, and I know that a lot of people are asking for it. Um, high scores. Whatever table you have selected, like, you know, move the menu over to, it'll display global high scores up on the back glass. Top 10. Okay. If you wait a long time, eventually it'll show your local high scores. <laughs> so the, t the ones that you have on the table... It, as far as I'm concerned, I want to see those first. Um, yeah. Make me look up that. the global, but I want to see my high scores pop up. Um, being able to select what scores display first yeah. makes sense to me as well. That would be a nice quality of life. When enhancement. you post a score, it just says you've scored on the high score board. It doesn't tell you where. It doesn't tell you your position. No. Oh, that's... Yeah. Um, so that's kind of like one of those like, well, no, I want to know where I placed right then and there. Yeah, exactly. Um, Just like Zen. But unfortunately, what it is, is it has to communicate with the the, the network first. So And it doesn't right. do that until you exit out of your game. That's when it makes its connection and does the talking. Because oh. sometimes it doesn't talk immediately. It sometimes can take an hour or two for your score to actually populate. Oh, so it actually it. caches. It caches it. Or yeah. maybe it doesn't and it sends it and the leaderboards are the thing that are taking a while to refresh yeah like Something the actual software nature. leaderboards yeah. um right. and that's a that's a subscription feature isn't it you gotta have a, a sub to get access to global leaderboards i don't i honestly no. i don't know they're up there right now i don't and i don't have a subscription anything okay um but that's good then because you know they, i think there's some stuff they restrict and i'm a bit hazy on the details so they, they haven't the released yet what they're calling pinball net yeah Pin that's the thing pinball net allows you to basically have access to all the games for a month that's like fee. pinball pass it's pinball pass kind of like pinball pass yeah um they still haven't integrated that that's not supposed to happen until uh i think two weeks from now if even that it might not be until april there was a delay and because of the delay they're going to give everybody everybody that purchased one of these machines was going to get an automatic two year or i mean a two month subscription mm. and they're now extending that by another month um oh that's cool just, so you get a little bit more time a little bit more time, time. on it which is yeah. nice um yeah that's cool to, to mess around with all those and so i yeah i don't know about the global leaderboards if that is only via that or not um hard for me it's hard for me to say hmm. uh how about them haptics okay so yeah uh i got the surround sound feedback kit uh pre-installed they uh i was going to do it myself and because i didn't want to delay in the shipment and then they were like no we can get it to you with no delay it's just the 50 bucks i was like okay fine i'll pay the 50 bucks eliminate the hassle of me having to drill, carve a hole, drill well carve a hole in the bottom for the subwoofer to come through um mm. and all that and uh i'm very glad i paid it because by all accounts a lot of people are saying it's finicky lining up the speakers where they're needing to go and avoiding mm. all the wires that are dangling about and some people have caused damage uh who weren't being particularly careful so yeah um for me it was worth it however my game still got delayed the amount of time that they initially had told me uh, it was gonna be so i didn't get it um basically i got it two days before my birthday at the end of february so right um but uh, still though sounds like if you were like considering buying one of these cabinets and you're in america and you wanted that surround sound thing just pay the money and i'm gonna tell you right now unless i'm sure there's a third party that are doing surround sound feedback kits. I mean, they were doing it for the Legends HD, so I'm sure that mm. they'll do the same thing. Um, with those, it was though you had an exterior module and an amplifier, and you could turn the volume there. This, it's all integrated into the software, which is kind of what I wanted. Um, yeah. So, if you didn't do the surround sound feedback, all you would have is the two haptics that are underneath your palm, 
in the uh, where the D pad board is or where the arcade stick is. And there are two solenoids pounding into the bottom of the cabinet. And I checked today, there's a video I'm going to be posting real soon this week that they're legitimate real coils, solenoid fires. It's not, right. again, arcade one up, they had these little plastic things. <laughs> Yes. That, yeah. again, it felt like a toy. It was nice that it was an actual solenoid as opposed to, again, I don't think the Legends HD had a solenoid at all. I think it was all speakers. All speakers, Yeah, I think. Um, yeah. But this is a legit solenoid. Uh, so when you're playing, both the speaker fires when you hit the flipper button and the solenoids fire. Mm -hmm. Those solenoids are loud. <laughs> You can yes. turn the solenoids off so that it's just the speakers, and now you have complete control of your, of your volume, how loud those are actually going to be playing. That's cool. Uh, the surround sound feedback is pretty amazing. Is it? It's pretty amazing. Um, I'm going to just say right now, what Magic Pixel has done, they have utilized that surround sound feedback to... The hilt. Right. That table is alive. That ball, you know where it's rolling. You know where th things are firing. The sound that they you um, that they've utilized is bright and in your face, and it sounds like you're in front of a real machine. Wow. Um, that sounds really cool. I'd it love really to be able does. To experience that. It really does. Yeah. Uh, and and you know when the pop bumpers are going, it feels like because it's the speaker that's way up there. It's a seven point one surround sound basically. Um, wow, where that, do they put all the speakers? On the sides of the cabinet. Oh, do they? Right. So yeah. So, so basically, this is inside the cabinet. What, basically, what you got is you got the two speakers coming out the front, right? Yeah. You've got four, so two directly below those speakers, the back of the cabinet, um, two midway. And then you've got the two that are right underneath your palms. And then you've got yep. the subwoofer. So there's your 7.1. Wow. Okay. Right. Um, the subwoofer doesn't, like, when you do an audio check, it barely sounds like it's on. Yeah. And it, Oh, and the subwoofer is encased in a box. So it really uh -huh. is, can be booming. Um, so it's got its own bass reflex chamber. Yes. Right. It's not using the cabinet as the base reflex chain, which pretty much all other pinball machines do. Right. Um, and I think that that was what was causing initially people having an issue with the... Um, the, uh, 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 the nudging. Um, accelerometer. Uh, fire, misfiring. Because... Oh, because it was vibrating too much. Yes. Uh, so... Uh. I don't know if that's what the enclosure is was supposed to help. I haven't had the subwoofer fire off my accelerometer. But what people that first got this were saying that the subwoofer was really loud. And then the firmware update that I obviously updated immediately and didn't know any different was apparently killed the sound of the subwoofer. And it's something, again, at games, I guess, is looking at, adjusting, making it better. Mm. Um, that being said, depending on the game that you're playing, Sometimes, man, it sounds like that subwoofer's rocking. Like you, you feel the rumble in the cab and stuff. Um, yeah. So it actually, would you say that it kind of emulates like a shaker motor a bit, or uh, is it not quite shaker motor? Level? No, not quite. And again, I'd be very curious to like it was then put out uh, Roadshow. That's where I'd really want to know. Because obviously that's a shaker motor. I don't yeah, is, know yeah. that Magic Pixel is trying to emulate a shaker motor in any of theirs. No, um, and I say that because they have a table that's Dino Dynasty, Dinosaur Dynasty. There, yeah. There's a moment where it's like a dinosaur is stomping and the whole the play field shakes. Oh, yeah. But you don't feel it. Yeah. And that would okay. be, it seems like a key moment where that subwoofer should be just like, bah, bah, you know, firing. Yeah, um, making a lot of noise. Yeah. yeah. On Adam's family and Snoopy, Zen, you got some work to do. <laughs> right. Their surround sound sounds like it's muffled. It sounds like it's in a box. They need yeah. to adjust the timber 
of everything and brighten it up. Just crank mm-hmm. up that treble. Um, because right. it's all very muted and mur, 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 muffled sounding. Adam's family, my God, you can hear that ball drop into the subway. You can hear the ball roll forward into the oh, yeah? uh, the eject. I mean, you you can hear all the mechanics working underneath, which is cool. But again, cool. it's just when you compare it to what Magic Pixel is doing, it just sounds muffled. It doesn't sound Do you think as- it's because... Like they're probably tuning it for speakers that are exposed to the air, but probably because yes. they're inside the cabinet, it's it, everything sounds like it's like underwater. Correct, essentially, right? Correct. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to get into this. I think ties into other problems that Zen is having. I'll get into that mm-hmm. in a moment. Um, okay. So my cab came with 15 tables, came with Adam's family, and then four natural Magic history Christmas. tables, and then a mess of what is that? Four, and then ten. Uh, Zachariah Deluxe tables, right? Okay, with the with the video screens, right? I have mm-hmm. never played any of the Deluxe tables, and obviously never played the Natural History because those are exclusive to to this cab at games to yeah. at games. Uh, Magic Pixel, you're lazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Every single DMD has the exact same font has the exact same swirly, stupid background. Mm. It's lazy. It has nothing yeah. to do with the game It's not even itself. themed. It's not themed not at all themed. to the table. The, at the very most, there's a graphic that'll pop up that is themed to the table, but it only pops up momentarily, and then you're back to the scoring, and it's back to the exact same font, exact same kaleidoscope mm. swirls. It's on every Magic Pixel title including the Seuss tables, including the Taito tables, every single one of them. Inexcusable. That's just lazy. Um, that is pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. The And I'll, I'll eventually do a breakdown of, I'm, I'm going through it right now, of the tables um, and my kind of review of them. But in general, all these deluxe tables are all 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 Magic Pixel did was just stack layers. But because we're looking at it top down, you can't tell. And they didn't right. like the clear layers, there should be cloudiness as you go deeper. And it's not. And so it is visually very confusing on a lot of things. And you yeah, know right. how I'm not a fan of mini playfields. Mm-hmm. They've got mini playfields up the wazoo, and they're pointless. <laughs> and sometimes right. I can't for the life of me figure out how to get to them because they'll have something magical come and grab the ball and drop it on there, which means you have right. to do a sequence of something in order to get it to grab the ball in the first place. It's not a ramp directly leading to no. it. No. Yeah, so that's, that's I a don't, problem. don't like that. Um, the natural history tables, all four of them have this cloud that floats over the play field. Would have been cool on one of them. But the fact that it's on all four of them, and it, and the cloud is different colors. So like on Amazon, it's a rain cloud. On uh, Dino Dynasty, it's the cloud from a volcano. On the exoplanet, it's a green cloud. But it's a cloud, and it just floats all around the table, obscuring your vision, which is like... I, I'm fine with the fact that it makes it more interactive. Mm. But the fact that they put it on all four of the tables is just, you're repeating Lazy. the same trick. Mm. And in general, all of these deluxe tables, apart from a the same, they're very the same. The Oh, mm-hmm. and oh, the synth soundtrack. Oh, the... Magic you can people turn off, been strong. You can turn off music. Yeah. But if you turn it off for one table, you turn it off for every table. Mm. So if I want to go play Adam's Family, I then have to go back through the menu, the you know the main settings menu, turn music back on, and then I have music with Adam's Family. But then if I want to go play any of these other ones, I'd have to go back and turn off the music. And believe me, I want to turn off the music. <laughs> on most of them, <laughs> I want to turn off the music. There's only yeah. like maybe three or four where I'm like, music works. I'm cool with it. Um, yeah. 
And oh. it's mostly the ones from Zen. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I'm talking about of the Magic Pixel stuff. Uh, what ones do you think have tolerable music on um, on from the Magic Pixel collections? I mean, off the top of my head, it's hard for me to to even go there. Um, it's a question for later. Then it's have a question for later. It. It's a question for later. Um, mm. That that'll be something that I keep in mind uh, when yeah. I when I do an actual review of that stuff. Uh, oh, the volume level between Zen and Magic Pixel. Magic, like Zen, if you set your volume to say thirty, you then play a Magic Pixel game, and it's as if it went to sixty. Mm. just yeah blows you out <laughs> which brain. is really and annoying just, yeah zen we, always like the thing is that zen always has had troubles with volume leveling in their games and they still do it's they haven't got it quite right yeah but i would expect that app games would have balanced the volumes you know what i mean they're the hardware vendor not the software vendor <laughs> okay <laughs> But, it's, it comes down to the person cutting the code for each. No, of but what I'm now. saying is, your hardware does have volume control. Yeah. And if you're having, you know, because eventually Farsight's games are also going to be on this thing, okay, with the Gottlieb collections, I want everything to be even volume. You know, there's no reason why at games couldn't pre-do the volume levels so that they're matching. Um, because there's not, it's, I don't expect Zen to talk to Magic Pixel and go, hey, what you know? Let's balance these out. That's not a thing. That it I really just comes out of what are the decibels coming out of the speakers? That's what they need to level it on. And that's what um, I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If they're uh, getting like a feed of like five decibel out and yeah. it sums ten, yeah. then they adjust it at the hardware level to be a consistent thing. Yeah. They could do that. I, I think that that's possible. Um. Keeping up with Magic Pixel. So uh, I was fortunate enough, the contact that I have at, at games um, gave me some table codes. So I wound up getting oh, nice. the Dr. Seuss kit tables and I wound up getting the uh, Taito collection tables. Okay. And those Taito tables surprised me. Oh, really? Some of them are excellent. Some of them know. are, eh. <laughs> yeah. What you find out though is okay. Space Invaders, hands down, great, wonderful, right, fantastic. Except for you go on forever. Oh, it's a long playing game, and hey? you're doing the same thing the entire game, which mm. is it's a very open play field. Yeah. On purpose. Because you have waves of invaders. You start off with one invader, then it's two invaders, and then you know four, and, and they just keep on yeah. expanding, right? And their health keeps on growing. And it's not just you hitting the ball and whacking them. You have turrets on your uh, slingshots that are firing at them or can fire at them. And then by hitting ramps, you can freeze them or hitting stand-up targets, you can... Uh, fire missiles at them or hitting this other thing will send out a gas that decreases their life by half. So there's ways of making them go lower. Okay. But it's also a game where it's not just three balls. You basically have five lives and you have to eliminate a certain amount of the wave Otherwise, even though you still might have five lives, the game might just end because you didn't eliminate enough. Mm. But if you're eliminating enough, well, at one point I had 11 lives. Oh, that's a lot of lives. And you're just playing and playing. And it becomes where it's, it's like there's nothing new that I'm doing, though. I'm hitting the exact same shots. I'm not even paying attention to where the space invaders are. I'm just trying to freeze and nail and go. And there's where it gets repetitive and kind of same well, boring. Well, I guess that's Space Invaders, right? That's Space that's, Invaders. That's that's how the game plays. So in Space arcade, Invaders like, is in one game. pack. Bubble yeah. Bobble is in another pack. And Operation oh, yeah. Wolf is in another, another pack. All three of them, the exact same game mechanic. Oh, really? 
lazy. Lazy. <laughs> lazy. Lazy. All three of those have great sound packages. Right. Um, stripped from the games kind of thing. Again, the Space Invaders one sounds great. Um, yeah. But lazy. Then yeah. you have the other tables that come with them. And they are all, all of a sudden you have an EM reel, basically. Except for it doesn't roll oh, okay. like an EM reel. It just goes digital, but it looks like an EM reel. And I get lazy. <laughs> lazy. Um, and yeah. I the scoring is more akin to what an EM would be. Uh, the layouts are very much, and this is where at games, or not at games, uh, Magic Pixel excels. And I've always said they should be doing Gottlieb EMs. They're good at yes. the simple layouts. Please. They're good at Let those. Me give them. Give uh, them Gottlieb EMs. Yeah. My so God. there's a handful of titles that are uh, quite fun with the layouts. There's one called Ch- uh, Chack and Pop that literally is a reskin of William's Sorcerer. <laughs> it's the oh, ex- really? It's the exact same layout. Exact. Huh. I mean, I, I really need to do a layover and see if it's what has changed. But as soon as I saw it, I went, well, that's Sorcerer. That's <laughs> um, where yeah. they fail or don't do as good, they're just not very good at coding uh, yeah, for the rules. games, at the rules. Yeah. So yeah. if you treat it like an EM, which also isn't going to have an amazing set of rules, they don't, then you're mm. going to be fine. Then you'll enjoy it. Um, yeah. The physics are great. Love the physics. It's a yeah. very bouncy okay. ball. Um, but it's a very live ball. It's not floaty like what Zachariah Pinball used to be like, where it was kind yeah, of right. odd. It just felt weird. It felt like Farsight's physics. No, these are... They feel great. It feels like you're playing a machine. Um, oh, that's so, pretty good. So that's pretty good. Very narrow flipper gap, though, so your games go forever. Mm. Um, oh, and that's something you know. On all, every single one of the deluxe tables, the Seuss tables, and the natural history tables... There's a center post, and the center post lowers and then can raise back again. And when I say lower, it's like a zipper flipper where it slowly goes down to make the gap bigger. Ah. But then if you do something, it'll spring back forward so that it's now directly in between the flippers. But again... It's like zero chance of draining. Yeah, it makes the games go on a long time. Yeah, right. Um, And again, it's that, why are you doing this on every single one? Have it have a purpose. Um, it's a feature. Like that that was a feature on all other games. There like, are oh, some post, of the yeah. and I think this is in the Tato ones, definitely in the Seuss ones, where you're like, why did you put a flipper there? There's literally nothing for that flipper to be flipping to. Mm. Like why is it there? <laughs> what am I supposed to be shooting with that? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm it's it's a diverter. That's all it is. That's all right. you're doing. So weirdness there. Um okay. Like I said, Tato Collection, though, worth the money. Um, okay, that's good to know. Seuss Collection, the one, the, the two-and-a-half-year-old that comes here and uh, <laughs> that my wife watches, loves playing the pinball. <laughs> he just goes... Oh, yeah. clack, 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 clack. But he really likes the Seuss tables because he's been reading Dr. Seuss. Right. So if you got a kid in the house, it's a great... That's pull an instant in. purchase. Yeah. yeah. There's a yeah. great way to pull yeah. them. That being said, they're not easy tables because they work in zones. Oh. And that's not an easy way of playing pinball. So said kid drains fast because mm-hmm. there's not a long play. Whereas Space Invaders, he goes on a long time because it's a big open play field. Yeah. Um. I'm probably going to be getting one or two of the Gottlieb collection. Um, basically the ones that have the EMs in it because I don't want anything to do with, you know, Bone Busters or Winter Sports or, you know, <laughs> whatever, Wipeout. Um, yeah. Uh, but I do want to try them and see, did Farsight work on out? these? Or did they just port them to HD, which is what I suspect happened. Um, that being said, theirs have been delayed from when they were supposed to come out, which is par for the course for Farsight. 
which is absolutely. They probably had to find an engineer that knew how to compile the code. Yeah. Um, that's still on staff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's, it's, but do I you know. do I think for an instant that the graphics were all updated and that there's not oh, going to be a no. scorecard that's crystal clear to read? Nope. I guarantee heck it's gonna no. be blurry. Um <laughs> No. Nah. Set so. your expectations as low as you can and yeah. then be pleasantly surprised at what you get. Yeah. It's, All right. And it's very harsh, I know, but like, come on, we're realists here. So let's talk like, about the um, uh, two Zen titles that are available. Uh, Adam's Family, which came on the machine, and then Snoopy, um, which I also mm -hmm. got. Uh, Elephant in the Room, lag exists. 100%. Yeah. It is there. Mm -hmm. um, it is it unplayable? No. You can play it. It very much reminds me of when I had my projection TV and I was playing uh, on my PS3 through a receiver and that was introducing lag. Oh, yes. And yeah. my brain got accustomed to it and I was able to deal with it. Where it becomes painfully obvious, and this was the exact same thing with when I was playing it there, is when you need to do that quick save, that quick that twitch because the ball went off funky on the tip and went over to the other side you're not going to have time to react you just yeah you're you, gonna lose you it. don't you're gonna lose it um but i've been able to post pretty good scores on adam's family um hmm. i've made the top 50 on the board i think i'm in the 30s right now oh that's nice right um yeah it it's it's playable it's just you Different. notice it. It's not as crisp. You go and play one of the, the Magic Pixel titles, and you're like, damn, that feels good. You play Adam's yeah. Family between the audio, yeah. and that, you're like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, it's not, uh, mm. you're not in love with it. It's, yeah. It, you, you have want, reservations. Yeah. You want to feel crisp and snappy. It's not. Um, yeah. That being said, I know for a fact Zen is still working on this issue. Um, yeah. They're very much aware of it. Mm. Um, video that I'm going to be posting, I did purchase Goldleaf Springs because everybody was saying, oh, it makes a ton of difference. And I went, it's not going to make a difference. It's a software issue. And I saw another yeah. YouTube video where the guy did super slow-mo on his button pushes compared to the flip, and he broke it down by milliseconds and went, there's no difference because it's software. <laughs> and, it's software. Uh, it's That's software, right. folks. Um, there's things that you can do. I turned off the solenoids Yeah. because the solenoids were firing as soon as you pushed the button, but then there's the delayed sound from the surround yes. sound. So it was like an echo. So I turn off the solenoids so I don't have the echo again helping my brain work into being yeah. able to be playing. Absolutely. Um, so it's there. That being yeah. said, the tables play great. Um, they're crisp. They look fine. Um, am I noticing that there's a lack of lighting fidelity compared to what is on the PC? Not particularly, because uh, it's right on par with what the Magic Pixel titles are looking like. Hmm. So, will I notice once I go OTG? Probably. I'm Probably. just not there yet. Yeah. I don't. I don't have the graphic card yet to be able to to run it. Um. So, you know, there's that. Um, another thing with the audio, and this is what I, uh, this is what I legitimately think Zen did. I don't think Zen programmed for the surround sound feedback. I don't think they did either. Um, and I say that. They probably didn't have it when they actually had their cabinet. No. Um, to test. Um, it feels like it is programmed for the rumble on your controller. Uh... And I say that specifically because whenever the ball hits your flipper, like, if you want to do a dead pass and it hits the flipper, there is a deep bass. Boom. I'm like, uh, what the heck is that? It's right. It's the thing that would have triggered on the rumble pack right? to make you feel like it just bounced. Yep. It's the wrong sound, Zen. Get rid mm. of it. 
Yep. It shouldn't do a funk. It's louder than when the ball is in the pop bumpers. Oh, no, that's not right. That's what I'm saying. No. It's coded for the rumble. It's not coded for surround sound. Now, I should say, they obviously did do something because you can hear the direction of where things are happening on various pieces. Right. But Zen needs to spend more time on it. They need to go in yeah, right. and do us bespoke surround sound um, to get awesome. into there. I think, obviously, all their attention right now is on the lag and not on that. Um, That's the right place to be spending the money, let's be frank. But um, b- announced they've got Next Generation, Twilight Zone, the three Star Trek tables, and then obviously they got the cabinet for Mars Attacks, or Mars Attacks, uh, Attack from Mars coming out. That's a nice lineup of It's content. a nice lineup, but if you're having this problem across the table, all, all of it, people aren't going to be happy. People aren't going to want to be no. necessarily be buying this stuff. So it needs to be fixed They're gonna need sooner to work out how to rather than later. Fix it. Um, yeah. I, I think that after the lag, it, that the, the sound issue needs to be addressed um, right quick. It honestly comes back to my concerns about having that rock chip package on their um on their board. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's definitely fine for the Magic Pixel stuff because they're not running Unreal. Um, but yeah, they there's got to be a I don't know whether they can actually solve this with software. Yeah, like it's it is a they they're bottlenecked by the hardware at the moment. I just don't know how they can move around this. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. And Magic Pixel has obviously had a lot longer time with to optimize. The, well, I mean, yeah, because they were doing everything for Legends HD, so they've had a lot they more were. time with this whole thing, being able to figure it out. So it makes all the sense in the world. They knew the sounds, the surround sound, feedback. Boom, got it. Absolutely, we're designing exactly for it. what to, to um, do. Yeah. Whereas Zen is clear is just porting to this. Um, yeah. But you know, again. Zen, you're competing with yourself for anybody that's doing OTG. And if you want to make this, anybody that's buying these cabinets and you want to make them uh, feel like they're getting the best experience, it's little, well, the lag isn't a little thing, but the audio, that's a little thing that shouldn't, you just need somebody to go in there and redesign the, the, the timber of all the sounds. Yeah. And just adjust the just adjust. just adjust the levels, and you'll be good, yeah. and you'll be good. Yeah. Um. Otherwise, I mean, that's just kind of running down there. But I'm happy with this, Jared. It's it's cool. Mm. It's a it lot of fun. Sounds really good. It sounds like it's a great little thing to have in the corner of your house, just to walk up to and play. It, it that's exactly what it is. It's just sitting in my living room, and you know, I get done watching TV or whatever, and I'm like, mm, I'm gonna go play a game or two. And next thing you know, an hour has passed. Um, mm-hmm. uh, like I said, I've now got 35 games built into this thing. Um, I'll looking forward to being able to sample all the tables that I don't have, which will basically be all the regular Zacharia collection. Um, yes. Uh, just to see what those all feel like and look like. Oh, that's the other thing with Zach, uh, with Magic Pixel and these deluxe tables. Um, because it's top down, there's so much stuff that's obscured in terms of reading anything. Again, oh, I was yeah. like, did you guys not think you were designing this exclusively for this cabinet, not to be played elsewhere? You should have thought about some of this. Just saying. Yeah. Um, but. I'm really looking forward to uh, getting the computer hooked up and playing OTG, seeing what the difference is there. Um, I just need to get a better graphics card because... I watched, um, yeah. to follow up on last episode, I did actually watch Spacey's videos mm-hmm. on, on how to get um, uh, everything set up. Yeah. And he definitely did a great job oh, of yeah. that video. Um, I actually, <laughs> I still don't have time to actually do it, but like watching it, it's like you, it's still even if you use the installer, um, the baller installer to install everything, you still got to go and select the right main package if you want to use VR. You still got to it's still assembly required, but it gets you a long way there. I was gonna say, That's but you, are you? Do you feel like you're a little bit more inclined to try it now than you were before? Mm. 
One hundred percent, yes. Yeah. Like it's like I would watch that video a few more times, get my head around it, yeah. and at least I know where to start. And I think the the flow chart that um, uh, that Spacey's used um, in there to show the different bits, like it it makes you go, I don't need that, I don't need that, I don't need that because I don't have a cabinet, and you yeah. don't have to worry about it. Yeah, like that's that's really that's really useful information and and right. i it, and it pains me to say this but now that i have a cabinet so much of my focus is on it now um yeah. uh, that's what i when i say i'm really enjoying this that's my biggest takeaway um you know because i had a screen that rotated and i could play cabinet mode but i was sitting yeah. still sitting doing the thing I'm telling you folks <laughs> Once you go this route, yikes! Um, it, it's very enticing, and it's you want everything adjusted for it now, even though you know that your niche right. among everybody else is playing. Um, yeah. It's it's a spectacular feeling, and I know Jared feels the same way when he's played VR, where it's like, oh, oh please yeah. make it all for this now. Um, Man, I just, I'm counting down the days. Probably, you know, towards the end of the year, let's be frank, probably before we even see anything VR. Yeah. But, like, geez. Well, what I'm really yeah, hoping it's for... so good. What I'm really hoping for is that I can use this cabinet as the controller for when I play VR. Yeah, you can basically get rid of your pin sim, yeah. and this becomes your controller. Yeah. Yeah, Especially... it's got all the things you want in it. It's got, it's got all the DOF, it's got... Yeah. Well, it's got surround sound, it's got everything you would want in a cabinet to be leaning yeah, up against it would be it would be VR. amazing it would that would be just like that'd be it done and you know what would be even better well mm. even more interesting is that with um quest well just as jared was going to say something interesting <laughs> bye Free. jared oh there you go try again jared. am i back try again hello hi so the other thing was um with quest 3 yeah. and the newer vr headsets you've got AR pass-through. So imagine mm -hmm. being able to stand in front of your Legends cabinet and have some sort of like, I don't know, a VR code, like a, a QR code that keys in all the surfaces onto your Legends at Games cabinet. Oh, come on. And gives you... How about that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine if you could actually do that yeah. in VR and they coded that in. That would be like, shut up and take my money. That's, that'd be amazing. Yeah. So... I am yep. in conclusion <laughs> for everything. I'm just going to say, if you're looking, I, I can hundred percent say if you're looking to get into VR cabinets on the cheap end of things that you didn't want to spend the $4,000 minimum to do the full size cabinet with the 46 inch screen or whatever it is. And you know, all those bells and whistles where the price tag just shoots up really fast, but you really feel second to none. This feels so much better than the arcade one-up cabinet that I tried out at Costco, which did mm -hmm. feel like a toy. And it looks way better than the Legends HD looked via pictures and artwork. Um, plus, you've got the three screens and everything like that. I think, um, I mean, in terms of building it yourself, price-wise, fit and finish, I'm happy. Um, mm. for right now, you know, again, I've had it for a month and a half. Um, it, it's hard to say what the build quality will be, you know, a year from now, but based off of everybody's, uh, experiences with owning the Legends HD, it seems like it'll hold up. Um, nobody has complained about the packaging that has been shipped in. Any damage has been purely because of, uh, FedEx. So... Um, I think it's a, it, it feels like it's a good product. I think Zen made a uh, a, a smart, wise choice here. Um, so, you know, keep your eyes out. Maybe pick up one of those pre-sales uh, for less than the fifteen hundred bucks. But get your surround sound feedback kit in there for sure. That sounds like a game changer. Yeah, that that feedback kit and get them to install it. <laughs> yes, get them to install it. Don't don't mess around. <laughs> it should. It really should just be sold that way. What are you going to do? Um, all right. This has been exceedingly long because we had, you know, long gap in between time. Yeah. But next time, 
who knows? Maybe Zen hasn't put out a game in a while. Maybe we'll have a game by the next time we talk. It's yeah, possible. You never know. Um, but if we don't talk about that, we'll talk about all the things Jared likes to talk about. She had a blank screen. Okay, go, Jared. Stuff and things. <laughs> In... I'm presuming that went through because I don't know. <laughs> the audio went through, but you were completely frozen. It was fantastic. All right, folks. Yeah. Until next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>